America is not a racist country. Ladies and gentlemen, we have another exoneration. A man that sat in prison for a rape that never happened. You know how it is. All white jury, black man goes to jail. Decades later, wrong black man, he gets exonerated. It's the great American way. And he was placed there, all white jury, all white jury. Those juries should be outlawed, for real. Shouldn't even be allowed. So this is the New York Times, ladies and gentlemen, November 24th, 2021. Man is exonerated in rape case described in Alex Siebel's uh, memoir. So this happened in Syracuse, New York. In a park, 1981 was described as raw detail in a memoir published nearly 20 years after it occurred as the man convicted of the crime struggled to rebuild his life after his release from prison. You know what, when y'all do this to people, you should go to jail. Maybe you should sit there for 20 years. I bet you all of these exonerations would go away real fast. The only reason why it keeps happening is because there's no consequences. You know, that's how they have the system rigged up. Never any consequences. The book titled Lucky launched the career of Arthur Alice Siebold, who later rose to international fame with The Lovely Bones, the novel that also centers on sexual assault and sold millions of copies. The man who was convicted of the attack, Anthony J. Broadwater, had always maintained his innocence. On Monday, he was exonerated. Uh, as a state judge, his defense lawyers, mm-mm-mm. Mm-mm-mm. and Onondaga County District Attorney agreed that the case against him had been willfully flawed. Trust me, they knew it was flawed back in 1981 and just didn't care. It's a long day coming, Mr. Broadwater, 61, said in an interview on Tuesday, recalling the years of stigma and isolation he faced as a registered sex offender. He got married and sought work after spending 16 years in prison but found himself caught off from opportunities because of the conviction, a conviction he never should have had. He never should have had this conviction. On my two hands, I can count the people that allowed me to grace their homes and dinners, and I didn't get a pass 10. So he got rejected most of the time because people believe the conviction that's on them. And see, that's the thing. Even after these men are exonerated, there are always going to be some people that will believe they were really guilty when they weren't. That's how society is made to believe that a black man is always guilty of something. And these folks got a lot of nerve. They got a worse track record than us. But they tried to um, just make everybody believe anything bad is coming from a black man, which is the biggest lie they can tell. We know your history. That's why you're fighting like hell to keep CRT out of everything, because you know how bad it is, too. We couldn't outdevil you even on our best day. The attack took place when Ms. Seabolt was a freshman at Syracuse University, she writes in her memoirs, which was published in 1999 about how she told campus uh, security about the attack right away and went to the police. After evidence was collected from a rape kit, she described her assailant's features to the police, but the result composite didn't resemble him she wrote. 
Mr. Broadwater was arrested five months later after Miss Seabond uh, passed him on the street and contacted the police. You know, I think they are probably by far the worst in identifying black people. I'm serious. I think they are got to be the worst when it comes down to ID and the right black person. All right. So how terrible. So just because she spotted him on the streets, she assumed, oh, well, this is the man that, that attacked me. But she identified a different man as her attacker in the police lineup. So she don't know who raped her. Okay. So you picked Anthony Broadwater, and then when they had a lineup, you picked a whole different black man. You don't know who, <laughs> did the rape even happen? I think Seabold is full of crap. So in her memoir, she writes that Mr. Broadwater and the man next to him looked alike. And that moments after she made her choice, she felt she had picked the wrong man. She later identified Mr. Broadwater in court. Okay, well, if you knew you picked the right man, why did you continue to say it was him in court? Oh, these people ain't no damn good. Miss Seabolt used a fictitious name for Mr. Broadwater in her memoir, describing him as Gregory Madison. In their motion to vacate the conviction, the defense lawyers, J. David Hammond and Melissa K. Swartz, wrote that the case had relied solely on Ms. Seabolt's identification of Mr. Broadwater in the courtroom and now a discredited method of microscopic hair analysis. They also argued that the prosecution misconduct was a factor during the police lineup. The prosecutor had falsely told Miss Seabolt that Broadwater and the man next to him were friends who per uh, purposely appeared in the lineup together to trick her. So the prosecutor is just lying. Mm -mm -mm and that it had improperly influenced Ms. Seabolt's later testimony. Mm -mm -mm. I'm not going to sully these proceedings by saying I'm sorry, Mr. Fitzpatrick said in court on Monday. That does not cut it. This should never have happened. State Supreme Court Justice Gordon J. Cuffey agreed and overturned Mr. Broadwater's conviction of first degree rape and five related charges. He will no longer be categorized as a sex offender. Ms. Seabolt had no comment on the decision of spokesman for Scribner, which published Lucky said. So the spokesman said that the publisher had no plans to update the text. A planned film adaptation of Lucky played a role in raising doubts about the case against Mr. Broadwater. Mm -mm -mm. Wow. I started having some doubts, not about the story that Alice told about her assault, which was tragic, but the second part of her book about the trial, which didn't hang together. Mm hmm. So this is a person that just interviewed her and realized that her story had some inconsistencies, the second part of her book. So, you know, I'm glad he was released, but what a tragedy for this man to go through. You ruined this man's life. You don't know what he could have been or what he could have done in his life or children he could have had or grandchildren. You know, he missed out on so much. And in my opinion, 
if you are a woman and you lie on somebody regarding rape, your ass should be sitting in jail. Whatever amount of years he sat in jail, that's the amount of years you need to sit your ass up in those jails. You know, I, I think it has been a travesty for many of these men that had to sit and be lied on about murders, rapes, burglaries, and you name it. And they had to spend all this time in jail and there's never any consequences. And in many cases, these prosecutors have the uh, evidence that could have cleared them decades ago, but withheld it or hid the evidence, took the evidence and hid it in their garage. Yes, they will go that far just to get that conviction, even if it means they don't have the right person. They don't care. They never cared. They rigged up the system for themselves and made sure they rigged it up where every little thing we do, you go to jail over it. The only thing your system needs to do is burn down to ashes. Please leave your comment and subscribe. Don't forget to hit on the notification bell and I'll see you on the next video. Peace, family.